Okay. Come on. This came from a conversation with an atheist. Um, he was threatening God and he was um, um, trying to um, confront God. And I, I told him, I said, well, because, you know, we, we had a lengthy conversation. I was trying to tell him about the goodness of God and all that. And God, knowing that there is people like that, he provided a place to confront them. Because I told him that um, that those, those type of people don't pick the time and the place. I said, God does. And God has provided this time and the place a long time ago. And you can start it out. You can read it. You can find it here in the book of Ezekiel 38. And the Lord has um, um, chosen me as a prophet before Him. So, so I know where this pl uh, I know where this place is. I know about the time that it's coming. And for all those who want that kind of relationship with God, I can. I can help you with that. Uh, I can help people with a, a loving God, or I can help those people that want to confront God um, to do that too. Um, but you know, like I was telling him, God is um, to nobody is God a nothing. You know what I mean? To nobody is God or nothing. God is something to everybody. He is either someone to hate. He is someone to avoid. He is someone to love. Or he is someone to seek after. He is someone to serve. He is someone to worship. God is somebody that you will uh, intellectually communicate with. All of those things is God. But to nobody is God a nothing. So, um, and, and I want to point this place out, okay? I wanted to do that today. I want to, I, if for the, all those who want to confront God and, and see if you can be a good match for Him, there is a couple of billion people, actually, that I find in the Bible. And, and I'm only estimating this uh, a year or so from now. now it, could, it could happen a little sooner, and it could happen later. But I'm just kind of guessing a year, year and a half or something, um, this is going to take place over in the in the upper part of Israel between uh, two cities called Shechem and Sukkoth. Shechem and Sukkoth. Um, um, it's, it's where the Bible predicts that this thing is going to take place. Okay, so, and um, and just let me kind of read some of it to you, okay? And you can go to the Bible, Ezekiel 38, it starts out. Um, this is the King James Version. It says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog in the land of Magog, that would be Iran and Russia. Then, uh, you know, I know there's people that argue that but I'm telling you it's Iran and Russia okay uh, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal and prophesy against them now the reason why it says against just those is because those are the leaders and right now you can see Russia and you can see Iran uh, binding together they they go out and practice war games together. Okay, and you can find news for that on any uh, internet site you go to. <coughs> Verse 3. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the Gog, the chief of Meshech and Tubal. Verse 4. And I will turn thee back and I will put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them that, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, 
even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Okay, not much more now. Stick with me. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with them, all of them with the shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tugamora and um, of the north quarters, and all his bands and many people with these. So see, it's not just those particular places that he has mentioned, but it's all those people. It's anybody who has a who has a bandana against God who wants to come out and shake his fist at God. God has provided a place for you to do that. Okay? And he says, After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from uh, the sword. Okay, and that is, excuse me, that is Israel. In 1948 that happened. And what's going on right now is that um, this thing with Ezekiel 38. Isaiah 17 is going to happen as a forerunner of this prophecy. A lot of, I don't know how quickly this is going to happen. So as soon as you see uh, Damascus is flattened, as soon as you see that, and you want to, if you want a confrontation with God, you get over there just as fast as you can, just to the north border of of Israel, and be ready to head down in towards Shechem and Sukkoth. You'd be over there just right above the, uh, what's called the Golan Heights. It's just, a, it's just a little strip of land between Israel and Syria. You just go over there and you just be right above that. And you get ready to move, and when you and all those people, they come, and you can go right with them. You can go right with those couple of billion people, and and you can face God over there when you get in just about a year and a half from now, something like that. It's gonna be. I'm just guesstimating, okay? But I want to I want to refer you to do something else. I'm going to advise you not to go. I want to uh, ask you and plead with you, don't do this silly thing. Because God plans on destroying all those people that's going to come out against him. That is going to come out against Israel. You know how you can know if you're one of these people? Because you already hate Israel in your heart. If you hate Israel in your heart, and you want a confrontation with God? God's calling you out. God is calling you out. He says, with a hook in your jaw, I will pull you down to this valley to plead with you for my people Israel. This, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. This is what's coming. This is what God's getting ready to do. God is going to miraculously move in a great strength. The Bible says when those people come out against him, that in a 12-hour period, he will wipe them all out. And it says for seven months, they will be picking up dead bodies. Now, see those, you folks, you think, you think God is all love? No, God is judgment, he is righteous, and he is holy. And God is sick and tired of looking at this sin-sick world. And for all those people that have that have made a front and have shook their fists in God's face for 6,000 years, all those kinds of people, God is going to put an end to it now. He's going to say, okay, fellas, let's go down and let's, and let's talk about it and see what you want to do. You know what? I may get 10 views a month on this video <laughs> until after until after this happens but I'm telling you God God is getting ready to step into his throne God is getting ready to send his son back 
And God is getting ready to take what belongs to him again. And he's not going to ask anybody if he can do it. He's not going to ask the politicians of the United States, do you think this is politically correct if I come down and take what belongs to me? No. Because I think a bunch of those will be right over there with him. You know? And uh, you know something? Now listen. God's got lightning bolts. He doesn't forget where you are. If your heart is against Israel, God plans on leaving only a sixth part of the people on this on this world that hate Israel. And if he so desires, he can take you out no matter where you sit. Okay? But I counsel you to take up on you the Lord Jesus, who is the Son of God, who God sent in compassion for you and for me. Listen to what it says over here, verse 9. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Verse 10. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come unto my mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. Verse 11. Thou shalt say, I will go up in the land and un of unwalled villages. When this was written, there was no such thing. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take prey, to turn a hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon it. See, for more than 1,800 years, Israel set desolate, nothing but desert, over 1,800 years. Over 1,900 years. Okay. And I'm going to read you the part where it says leave just but a sixth of those people. Okay. Get down here where it says uh, uh, verse 15 uh, 16 Okay, thou shalt come against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land that shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, and that the heathen may know me, and when I shall be sanctified in, in thee, O God, in their eyes. That's verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Art thou he whom I have spoken of old time, my servant, the prophet of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring against thee. <laughs> For in my jealousy and my fire and my wrath have I spoken surely. Then that day there shall be a great shaking in the land. There is a great shaking in this land right now. You're in trouble. Okay. I'll just keep reading. I'm going to read here just a little bit. Um, thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations uh, and they shall uh, know that I am the Lord okay that must be in verse in chapter uh, 39 where it says I'll leave but just a six part uh, I did want to read that to you though he says I will turn thee back in 39 two. And leave but a sixth part. There it is right there. I will turn thee back and leave but a sixth part of thee. And I will cause thee to come up from the north parts. Bring thee up from the mountains of Israel. I will smite the bow and the left. And cause the arrows to fall on the hand of the right. Tongue. Okay, it's just that God. And this is what it says. You know. In, <clears throat> right there. Now listen to this prophecy. Okay, I can go and I'll re find it real quick and read it to you, but I want you to just hear it. The, it says for seven years, they will be picking up the machinery that had of the armies that come out against them. For seven years, they'll be picking up the machinery of the armies that come out against them. 
Now, for seven months, they'll pick up bodies. But for seven years, they'll pick up the machinery. And it doesn't take that long to pick up arrows and bows, <laughs> spears, you know, and uh, things like a catapult, something like that. That was the oh, it doesn't, you know, they can pile that stuff up and burn it six months and be gone. But it says for seven years, they'll be picking up machinery that has come out of the, that's got to be the planes, that's got to be tanks, jeeps, armored cars, do some halves, all kind of things like that, cannons, all kind of things like that they're going to bring out against Israel to destroy it. Even nuclear devices will they bring out against Israel. But this one little spot on the ground, this one little spot, it looks, it looks like a baseball in the in in the middle of a uh, of a baseball field. You know, the whole the whole stadium is coming against this baseball, but yet they will not defeat it. They will not defeat it. I counsel you to take up on you today the compassion of God. Don't go there. Don't be a part of that. Turn your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Accept Him as your Savior, just like that thief on the cross. Take the side of Christ. Take His side today. Don't listen to those people who is leading your heart to go the other way. Man, get, get along with God. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. This nation, every nation on the earth right now needs a lot of prayer. Listen, we need Elijah to come. We need the compassion of Elijah to touch this place. We need this world change. We need the hearts of the children to turn to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children. Once again, before this great and terrible day. The great day of the Lord's already came. That was when He was born. Now the terrible day is getting ready to come upon us. This terrible day of the Lord is getting ready to come upon us. What is the terrible day? It's those years of tribulation where He is going to take His hand and literally wipe out all of His enemies. All of His enemies who want to come out against Him and to destroy His land Israel. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Another great message right here. Cross in the Middle Ministry.